I'm Sorrel and this is Mark and this is Relationship Rebellion Yay! and I'm going to post in the comments right now please let us know if you're watching so if you're not watching then you can have a list <laughs> I'm nervous again <laughs> have you fallen to pieces just as, just as it's gone live it's just like, as you just it's like they're talking to TV prisons actually it probably isn't it? they're very professional there. Yeah, they don't fall apart in mm. the first sentence do they? So anyway, today we were going to talk about friendship. Um, I forget how we arrived at this decision, but we do. And I'm going to let Mark have the floor most of the time, unless, I'm uh, sorry, if I keep flapping my hands, it's because it's a fly and it's irritating. She's mad. No, I'm not. <laughs> you are the mad one. <laughs> anyway, so Mark's going to talk about friendship. Yes. <clears throat> and and I might prompt you if you forget anything. Well, that's, thank you. Okay. Wow, we're off. Do you want to tell us, tell the, the lovely people out there why we're talking about friendship when we're, this is about relationships? Because I might, they might want to know. Well, that's a good place to start. Um, that's funny, isn't it? Because fancy having a really close relationship with someone who wasn't actually your friend. Everybody can have, you really can have that. And so... And I looked at lonely old men. Lonely old men. They're called lones. Who had no friends. Yes. And, and then I realised the difference between colleagues and friends. Right, okay. Right. Or comrades and friends. Yes. Because a comrade is a relationship in which you depend. On each other. On each other. And can I just inject here that Mark is an ex- I bet he's a veteran a me, an army medic. Yes, sir. So he knows about comradeship in great detail. detail and Absolutely. Yes. It's cheap as chips. You are united immediately by a common enemy and you can be a comrade with anyone. All right. Okay. Because you are united in purpose against them over there. All right. So that's not a friend. That is a relationship of convenience because you're both in the shit. Yeah, that's one right. way of looking at it. Yeah. Fundamentally. Yeah. And it is that very threat that keeps you together. Yeah. So you're dependent and you're assets and you can let each other down and you can disappoint each other and you can not be good enough. And you can be all those things when you're a comrade. Can you let each other down if you're a comrade? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because you're a human being. Oh, okay. So all those things can happen when you're a comrade. They don't happen when you're a friend particularly okay because a friend doesn't put those expectations on you in the first place that might overburden you oh i see what you mean right. so there's a possibility of letting somebody down absolutely expectation not to let them down that is correct Got it. and so this is a service relationship as opposed to a friendship mm -hmm. a friendship is between equals who don't have to depend upon each other and that's why they can relax together mm -hmm. and that's why they don't disappoint each other mm. and that is because they are independent and have chosen to accept each other mm -hmm. and you know your friend can think something totally different from you and you won't mind at all because you respect his facility to have a brand new or different perspective to yours and what matters is that you like each other that's what matters yes and so friends don't even compete unless it's quite playful because why would you make your friend lose why would you give your friend mm. the feeling of loss mm. You know, if you want to compete, if you want that sort of relationship, go and have a competition over there. You know, my friends come to me to be relaxed, to be accepted, to be listened to, to be tolerated, yes. and uh, and occasionally to be summed up in a really funny sort of way, which gives them a different feeling about the gig. Yeah, um, yeah. And because I have no friends, have no hierarchy. They don't yeah. have to listen to me. No one's in charge of the friendship. And if you put a hierarchy in there, then it's not really friendship anymore, is it? No, no. Now you've got another thing entirely. Mm. Now you can take friendship into these other relationships, if you've got any sense. But if you have them without it, you're stuffed. Mm. Because now it's a hostile event. And it's all about loss and pettiness and anger. Yeah. Uh, and loss, absolutely. And so the example that you used earlier, which was, I had the agreement with what's-his-face that he would be there to pick up the kids and whatnot. Well, it wasn't mine, it was just a made up. It's the metaphor. Yeah. Right. And he doesn't do it. Because he's forgotten or whatever. Whatever. It doesn't really matter about mm. the reason. He's forgotten. Yeah. And you're cross 
Because it has a cost. Because, yeah, because the kids didn't get picked up from school or that's, whatever. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And you thought it was an agreement? Well, it was agreement. That, I mean, that, the, the, there we go. what I was saying was that it was an agreement. There that we was go. the idea behind Now, you see, this is the bond of service. This is the bond of service. And friendships can tolerate the bond of service. Yeah. But it has to be between friends. Now, him blurring out on you was not friendly. Not friendly, exactly. Right. Yeah. You're being really, really cross about him and the way he behaved. That wasn't friendly either. If yeah, if if I'm cross with him, because it's, it's interesting because I think you might feel angry because something should not have happened and it did happen, which is the kids got left to school. And but then it's how you deal with your anger, isn't it? That's right. And, and a friend recognizes that their friend is, spends a lot of time being an idiot because everyone <laughs> does. Yes, because we're not idiots. So, we're that, all so that when when we can accept that our friend is also an idiot periodically. And give them the space to adjust that. Mm. You know, there's no such thing as 100% reliability. This is why friendliness is so easy and so easy and so mm. quick to accommodate to plan B because you know what? No one's bloody reliable, mate. Not even. Well, certain, no one's 100% reliable. Precisely. Yeah, and so yeah. putting, putting that sort of burden on your friends would just not be friendly, would it? No, it wouldn't. Well, absolutely. Putting that burden on your servants or on your comrades is perfectly reasonable because that's what you're there for. Oh, I'm not to pay with you. <laughs> so, so, so friendly is really accommodating the inadequacies of others and not wanting particularly to punish them for it. it doesn't believe in punishment. You can punish the rest of the world. I don't want to punish anybody, but anyway, but you don't, yeah, punish, but you your don't punish your friends. Yeah, because they're just equal to you and you're. you're unreliable too as a human being yeah so one recognizes that in one's friends one doesn't punish them exactly but this is the difference between the punishing relationships and the unpunishing relationships a friendship is not a punishing relationship so what i was going to ask you mm -hmm. for the people out there watching mm -hmm. and if anyone's watching please let us know by putting a comment in or saying something in the comments um probably lull them to sleep you know what there's always said that to me somebody who's watched it <laughs> I know we want you to watch. Um, so yeah, the day before yesterday, was it? Yes. I think we were talking about the archetypes that can help. So someone who's not very good at friendship, hasn't worked out how to do it better, mm -hmm. maybe don't doesn't have access to the skill sets or, or the perspectives. Yes. You said bring the artist archetype, uh, uh, archetype into it. Yes. And so it would be really helpful, I think, if you could talk us through that. Because I started to sound like a TV presenter. Do you know, that's, kind of, that's a very, very cool question. Because artists get to make up what they jolly well like. <laughs> so whatever your artist archetype is, go for it. Generally speaking, what's interesting about art and why it broadens folk is because it turns out that art is, generally speaking, has an accuracy to it which comes from control. So as a painter... When you're getting ready to dob your brush on the canvas, you don't want it to be too much. You don't want it to be too little. You want it to be just right. And so therefore, a painting is generally speaking a thousand moments of discernment when it comes to the application of your energy to this experience and how you do it. And you can have angry paintings and you can have calmly warming paintings, you can have anything you jolly well like. It's up to the painter to create that, what they want yeah. to create. Okay. Now that skill does not exist in isolation. I think that skill of the application of yourself exists in all of our relationships. Yeah. And most, if not all of our conflicts are based on an excess or a dearth of something too much or too little. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to just right, the Goldilocks bit. And painters oh, are all yeah, about the gold in the last bit. And actually, if you're not tense and you're not terrified and you're not worried and you're not full of hate and you're not making hate oh, in yeah. your relationship, the Goldilocks place is really easy to find. It's just an accommodating space that cherishes a real being as opposed to some other notion. So the artist yeah. is constantly adjusting 
his or her way through their creation constantly and may and often just accepting what is yeah and the other thing you said the other day was about i think i prompted this a bit because we've had this conversation before is, is that you've painted something mm. and then you think oh i'm not sure about this and then you walk away from it maybe for 48 hours mm. and i think in relationships it's a little bit the same because sometimes it's like oh i'm not sure about this let me just go away and reserve judgment and and just do you know what that is that is the disappointment of a creator that doesn't know what good is and just because you've come to the point where you can't paint anymore mm -hmm. doesn't mean you've finished it might mean the picture's finished but <clears throat> you have to walk away from it because the drive the dissatisfaction that caused you to paint mm. it hasn't left you yet oh, is that and you can't mm. recognize what's good yet because you're still a bit creatory egoic cross <laughs> And that's the whole thing about this. Yeah. So now you have to walk away from your stuff and know that all of your opinions are going to be absolute nonsense until you've detoxed yourself to a point whereby you can actually create, appreciate what yes. you've done and actually appreciate anything else. And so you come back with fresh eyes. And you just, what you just said as well is that, and this happens in life in general, is that we form judgments at moments when we are really tired or, or you know, we've just had an argument with the children about something. When you're not whatever. reliable. Yeah, and you're not reliable, exactly, and your judgment is impaired. Absolutely. And I, I remember being told once at Sorrel, I think it may just be that you had a cold and you're really tired, and there's actually nothing to have coaching about, because I'd ask for some coaching. Um, yes, you, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. and it's just, I, and I thought I was too old, that's what it was. Because I just had a cold and I was really tired and stressed, and I travelled to London and had to get up at something godly. I have a morning to get there on time. So you were toxed, anxious. Yes. I'm um, malnourished, probably. Probably feeling 10 years older than I actually am, or was at the time. So, so this is a fragile feeling. It's a fragile feeling. So when you bring that to a relationship, or when you bring it to, to a work of art, or we, whatever you're creating, it could be a poem or Well, all you, br all you bring is your anxiety and your hunger. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And yeah. your tiredness. And yes. I just need to blow my nose. Well, yes. <laughs> well, an artist would be all right with that. You just realise that you were knackered and, and give you a bun and, and wait for, you know well, I'd, I'd do, so did the coach well good I was knackered. That was good good, good just that a, was it just, just, he said a cup of tea moment it might be just, just that you're tired and you've been ill and yes not recovered yet so i guess what we're saying here is that in a way a relationship is a bit like a painting or the friendship in a relationship friendship is a bit like a painting what in that it requires skills yeah. In, in that it requires you to remember that um, you're not in charge of somebody else's head or their heart Absolutely. and you can't be angry because they don't understand you or <sighs> comprehend what you're trying to tell them i mean how oh, tiny that, is that and actually that's really common isn't it people get angry because they're not understood absolutely and they're talking gobbledygook most of the time so of course they're jolly well misunderstood of course their partners can't understand the word that well do we not mainly talk gobbledygook to each other are you and i we talk i talk elvish half the time but that's not relevant. What's what's <laughs> what's, rev what's relevant is, is is being upset because somebody doesn't get you. Yeah, yeah, that's what's relevant. And actually, sometimes and just not repositioning yourself and taking another swing at it and seeing if they get this instead. You start saying it in different words or yes. it from a different angle. Well, this is the application of soft power, which is actually the core yes. of friendship. Yes. You know, everything else is hard. Um, or a variation of hard because it has conditions to it whereas friendship is just accepting it's it's just not particularly judgmental and it's not intimidated and it has no desire to save or to correct it it just likes you mm. and it recognizes its own mortality it's interesting you know because you talk about people not wanting to in a friendship not wanting to correct the other person and yet i see that a lot so it's possibly a measure of how good the friendship is. Well, this is because the friendship has hierarchy and dominance yeah, so of mind, and dominance of mind. And and if, that's, yeah, and if that's what your friendships are like, it's likely that's how your relationships are. It is likely. And that's worth noticing, because if you've noticed it in your friendship with somebody, you might be thinking, ah, oh, am I also doing this in my relationship with my other half? Well, yes. And quite likely you are, actually. I well, most of that's a common pattern. Of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. So, well, well, now we get into the prime skill sets, which is quite interesting, which yeah. is which is golden ears and golden eyes. 
which is the heart of friendship. The willingness to listen without judgment. Well, yes. And on its condensed level with energy, mm -hmm. with energy, on its mm -hmm. condensed usable level, yeah. I recognise love as service. Yes. Everything else is ego-based. So when I am listening with my golden ears, which don't want to interrupt you, mm -hmm. which appreciate what you're saying, which are not finding holes in you, which are not, which are just simply accepting you. Mm -hmm. Those are my golden ears. And when I'm looking at you with my golden eyes, which allows you to be seen at last in the day and all those things, mm -hmm. you know, in a world that doesn't see, in a world that doesn't listen. Mm -hmm. These are the services. When I do that, that's love. That's the invigoration yeah. that a parent gives a child. That's the invigoration that the audience gives the rock star. Oh, yeah. To be seen yeah. and to be heard. The moment I speak, it's ego. <laughs> I doubt, well, that was an interesting conversation we had yesterday, wasn't it, about how when it, how it is possible to speak without ego, because well, that is a really difficult trick. Well, this is, well, it's not possible. So therefore, I suspect... Oh, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree. Well, I don't mind having a spat on you, <laughs> yeah. on air. But <laughs> this is where friendship comes in, because there's no way that you would receive all of that service from your friend without returning that service to your friend. Of course, yeah. Okay. So now we get into that wonderful rhythm. Of friendship yes indeed that. so that's is, that interdependence not dependence but interdependence where in the reciprocity i see and hear you mm. you see and hear me yeah we bear each other no malice yeah i have no desire to win over you we are not in conflict yeah there we go and if you can do that in your relationship yes. then you're really getting a yes and actually you have no power over me i am here with you because mm. i like you yeah that's really important. Yeah. You know, because once you get into power, hierarchy, all sorts all of rankings, oh, it's you're just back to square one again. And it seems to me that that hierarchy thing comes in where usually the person at the bottom has, has probably experienced some trauma, has which is why they've been to occupy that position. Yes. And the person at the top end has also experience some trauma probably you know i i happen to think that they're, they're both doing the tango and it's just simply a question of which one's being flung about by whom it you can yeah sometimes they can spot positions is that what you're saying no i'm oh, not okay. saying that at all i'm saying that for them to even be together mm -hmm. requires a certain resonance yeah oh yeah 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 so, <laughs> so they will recognize each other like lock and key aren't they Yes, and, yeah. and, and, and until you go back to your factory settings and have a muck about, you're likely to attract another party who recognises your frequency. And of course, the prey will attract mm. predator. Yeah, How absolutely. can that not be the case? It behaves like prey. And so you've got a choice. You can either heal the relationship and heal a bit within the relationship, which means both parties are healing, or, it, or split up and go your separate well, ways. And he healing, and healing rather it illustrates the desire to um close the damage whereas actually growing is more of interest you know the damage okay. every scar has an enormous amount of wisdom in it yes it does the fact that you took that sucker tells you about the gaps in your defenses yes and it tells you about your imbalance and see and it's also worth remembering that whatever you were doing was something that you learned to do as a child which you had ha it was your response that kept you safe and worked right. when you were a child. That's it right. Kind of doesn't work in the marriage. That's right. Marriage. This is exactly the same thing as the bird pelting down the runway to take off, and then using an entirely different strategy to fly. One yes. is to get there, and the other is to woo. Yeah. And um, I think I look at. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Friendships are about gliding. Comradeship is all about belting down the runway. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can have you can mix these things if you're friendly. Yeah, and you know what? I like that because when you think about geese, yes, and how they fly in formation, yes, and they always take it in turns to be the one at the top. Well, that's because they're rank egos, and one of them wants to show off. You are so... obviously. That's how you pick up in geese society. You show them. Emerged. You show them. Did it? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fair, fair shares for everybody, isn't it? Mm. Oh, he's brought out the soft toys. I am sorry. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So a relationship works, generally speaking, if it has friendliness in it, because people want to turn up. If it doesn't have friendliness in it, then it is probably doomed to some kind of mm. horrible crash. Yes. And whatever a relationship is, if one of the parties doesn't have friendliness in it, then it's up to the other party to recognise and develop. Otherwise, you're complicit. Oh, that's the other thing is, yeah, it's yeah. like that guy Doug said to me, if you that's don't right. challenge the behaviour, you're colluding in it. Now, you see, when you're in shock and when your clever head is off and you're just a basic screaming monkey mm. ride, riding a crocodile, these yes. clever thoughts are not available to you. No, so, so this is why we have to be calm about this stuff. And mm. actually just having someone to point these things out to you makes a big mm. difference. Friends are also, generally speaking, very calm. And, and a friend can point these things out to you too. Oh, that's because you'll take it from a friend because he doesn't mind being rude to you. So it's normal. That's also you can't thing. offend each other because you accept each other. This is why man friends are so rude to each other because they're demonstrating how much they love each other by not knocking each other's block yeah, off. That's a man friend. It's it? definitely, it's, it's, well, it's comradeship bought into the friend space. Yeah. I'm thinking with women, mm. it's a little different. We're probably not so bluntly rude, but we do tease each other a bit. When we're, you know, this is the interesting thing. When men compete in, in this vulgarity, it's to lose. When women compete, it is to win. And there's a huge difference oh, between those two spaces. Yeah, that's not friendly behaviour when it's women. I don't know about men, but with uh, women it's not. Well, you see, with men, it's friendly because I don't mean it, obviously. Because you're, you're competing to lose. So because so, you're competing friendly, to lose. If you're competing to win, it's not very friendly. Exactly. There yeah, we go. Exactly. You can compete to lose with your friends. Everyone else. <laughs> but if you went to boarding school, it's a hard habit to break of competing to win. And that's because you didn't have friends in boarding school. You had comrades. You had people to compete with. Uh, and you were taught to compete. I don't even think I saw my friends at school as comrades, particularly. Well, you were united in against them. Well, OK, we had. Yeah, well, I guess we had some slightly comradely friendships. Of course you did. Midnight yeah. feast. Is a moment when you see your friends. Well, okay, so we came together. We did teamwork. Is that comradeship? That I is comradeship. It is, isn't it? It's yeah. asset based comradeship. Yeah, you buy the cider and I'll buy the biscuits. Yeah. That's teamwork, isn't it? Yes. Um, I'm not saying friendship doesn't grow out of comradeship. Oh, well, it can do. But it's now about percentages, you know. And if the comradeship is at 60%. Please don't not rub the ears off. I did that to Bunny and I don't want it to happen to Harriet. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, as you were saying, I'm sorry I interrupted you. you were, uh, I have no idea. You drew my attention to your hair. Where was it? <laughs> it was I probably really clever. It's probably like the significant moment, but never mind. We were talking about how the comradeship that we get at, yes. get at school can turn into friendship. Of course it can. Of course, of course it can. can yeah. Do you know, if you have a long, long, long association with anyone, and you're moderately fond of happy to see them, you're friends. Yes. That's, that's basically true. it. You yeah. know, the, your friend is okay with you. Your friend doesn't mind. Your friend might actually be helpful. You know what? If you're happy to see somebody, please to see somebody, and yeah. they're pleased to see you. Yes. That is a really good basis for any kind of relationship. That's about it. And, you know, they'll make you feel better in your misery. They'll they'll make you feel happy. They'll help you feel enjoy your glory. It's just, mm. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is how you're... You know, yeah, it's not exactly. what you're doing, it's just that oh, right. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to say to anyone else, if anyone's watching, please let us know. Um, we've got six minutes left, so it would be nice if anybody else is watching us. You know, I love the, the idea of actually pitching them to the void. Do you know, someone's watching us because they put a little leaf there, did they? Look, oh, well, somebody put a leaf there. That's nice. Somebody called Facebook yeah. user. Okay, that's nice. Um, I like anyway. it. <laughs> hello, leaf. Somebody anonymous, I yeah, like. hello, leaf. Oh, um, what was I gonna say? Something really clever. Probably not. Yeah, I, well, I suppose the, th the thing is that for people who, couples who are in conflict, the whole friendship thing is, is really a really useful tactic to adopt. Well, if, if you can make it work. Yes. Well, of course you can make it work. Well, of course you can make it work. Ugh. Yes, you probably. Mountains do not destroy water. No, they don't. Water destroys mountains. Absolutely. Therefore, demonstrating disparity of softness over hardness. And this is soft power. Yes, it is. This is just the, the warm thing as opposed to that. I'm 
right and your horrid thing. This is just the opposite of that. You know? is, one it? of them is two lettuces going. <laughs> <laughs> and, two lettuces. and the other one thinks, well, I'm not going to join that salad. I'm going for the casserole <laughs> over there. And, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Whatever it is. You know, one of them's got a future. The other one's just got a shelf life. You know? Yes. Come on, fly. Come on. Oh, are you being horrible to lettuces? <laughs> foodists, foodists. I'm sorry if oh leaf. I beg your pardon. You've inspired me. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anyway, are we finished? No, we've got five minutes. To oh blimey! Have we? Really? <laughs> I've said all the clever stuff. I've said all the clever stuff. All right. What else do you want? Well, no. I was just thinking there is that difficulty when one party decided they want to be friendly, and the other party is either not aware that's even a thing, or if they have become aware that it's a thing, they just don't want to do it, or they can't break out of their old. What's glorious about custom. friendly? This is the whole thing about as you wear it as a cloak. And what it comes with is a sovereign disinterest, which means because mm -hmm. there is no burden upon me to pay attention to you, other than I like you, but I might be busy with my head. If you're giving me all kinds of welly and I just haven't got the time to pay attention to it, I'm just I'm sorry I haven't got time to listen to this. Well, it's all there is that. You know, just because yeah. it's all urgent and everything. And one of the great services I do, my friends, is not being so desperately involved and fraught about things as they are and actually you can say to somebody who's been banging on for an hour and a half about whatever yeah um time's up now yeah that, in a friendship of course you can you can um, say my ears are weary <laughs> my ears are weary cheer me up man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do something tell a joke <gasps> and that's a boundary isn't it but well, it's it's an encouragement and it's, it's an, it is it's an encouragement, it's an encouragement because you know people who are leading with their trauma need to have that fact pointed out to them what about in a relationship? So in a relationship, it's probably going to be more, not so much them banging on about how awful things are, it's more them banging on about how awful you are. Well, that will come after the banging on about how awful things are. The things are first, and then it's your fault comes second. Oh, well, there is also that. You know, yes. I say it's about performance, and it'll be about current market. So <laughs> I, I just like the idea of using time out, to be honest. Which I, is, I say, I haven't never had to do that. I've never actually done this, but you know, I would say, I am. I'm just not in a good place right now. I'm not coping well with this. I'm going to go out for a walk. I'll be back in twenty minutes, or whatever time frame I decide upon. But I think the standard one is twenty minutes. Do you know that's friendly? Well, it is friendly. That is friendly. I'm not going to make any good moves right now, so I'm going to spare yeah. us that. Yeah. Both of us are that, and I'm going to go off and iron my head so I can come back and give it to you between your eyebrows. Yeah, but I need to find my balance, and I've, I've, that's a very friendly thing to do to retreat the field if you're not capable of being and there. Apparently, the yeah. other rule of time out is that you then do not discuss the subject that caused the conflict for at least 24 hours. So you go away, which is not picking the wound, which is not picking up the wound, yeah, because hopefully 24 hours later it might look a little bit different. Hopefully, 24 hours later, you'll calm down a bit and realize that. Well, Being actually, angry at someone is just hideous. Well, it's, a bit pointless. it's hideous to point fury at somebody mm. that you're going to climb into the same bed with. Well, it's just tiny, tiny, tiny stuff. And we have to be bigger than that if we're going to have a relationship. Otherwise, we're screwed. Mm. And I think this is probably why most of them crash and burn, because you have to be so big to have a successful relationship and be happy in it. You know what? I think once both, both parties recognise that they just need to, to to kind of the withholding judgment, the acceptance of things, the the, the importance of being friendly. Or when both parties accept all those things, it's actually fairly straightforward. It's when one party does and the other party doesn't. I think that's when it gets really Well, I, I think that's the editing process because, you know, eventually you're going to have to hang out with your equal. Oh, and you mean you might just go find somebody that's else? That's right, and you're just going to find somebody else because if they're not your equal because they're all petty and they bring this bloody malice to the thing. Or you you find some professional to help who will deal with the grandiose and tell him man to man that if you don't get your act together mate she's going to leave you that's my personal professional opinion anyway well i i, I have no such credence um I know. so well, neither do I, so, I'm man. so mine would be um Mate, you've got a skill shit shortage there, and uh, we can talk about it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't have to be professional. You, yeah. you could be a person who's had plenty of life experience. Well, actually, it's just... It's, 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 you've it's, seen do, it happen. Do you have the eyes to be able to identify somebody who's crap at love? And therefore, what would your conversation be about? Something and, like that. And crap at love is is hard to hide from. It's the wake of relate <laughs> of the one you're in and the ones you've had float past. Just say float past. That's right. So talking about love is rather like country and western. Oh, don't it's please, very sad. Please don't. It's very sad, but there's lots of funny things. Oh, it's lots of funny and things. And you can wear a cowboy hat. Well, you look good in a cowboy hat. But mm, I don't know. There we go. I don't know. Time is up. Yeah. Well, it's time to finish. All right. Thank you so we much. We have a Saturday to get on with. So, mm. well, thank you to the person who gave us a leaf for showing up. That was great. To thank you. Here. And obviously, this is going to go out on. I don't know how this works, but it, it just repeats itself. It recycles, doesn't it, on all these platforms? So, please feel free to comment again if you wish to. And we'll be here next Saturday, and we'll be here pretty much every Saturday in August. Wow. Okay. So that's good, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Bye. -bye.